With over 800 miles of coastline, California is home to beautiful beaches and legendary surf spots. The ocean is part of our lives, whether we swim, surf, or just relax on the sand. However, pollution from plastic products has created a major problem for the ocean and its wildlife. Washed up on our coast, plastic is present everywhere, across our beaches and in our waterways. As a packaging material, plastic is versatile, inexpensive and convenient. Unfortunately, with convenience comes a slow, degrading material that is lethal to marine life. Animals can interact with plastics through ingestion. So they think it's food, plastic will imitate their natural food sources. For example, albatross, their natural food source are squid. And so oftentimes we'll find huge amounts of red items in their gut when they die. Plastic is dangerous for sea turtles in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's not just sea turtles, it's all animals that live out in the ocean. So for example, for a sea turtle, if there was, let's say, a plastic grocery bag floating in the ocean, a sea turtle may mistake that for food. For example, a jellyfish, what they love to eat. So may eat that, we call that ingestion, when an animal eats the trash or plastic, mistaking that for food. The worst case of plastic, this is about the nastiest thing in the water, a water bottle. Why? Sea lions do not chew. They have six canines and the rest of these teeth are incisors. So sea lions will grab something and swallow it without chewing it. When this bottle floats around long enough in the water, it grows algae on it and it moves. The sea lion hence grabs it and swallows it. The worst case we've had here is an animal that died and on a necropsy, which means we have to cut them open to find out what caused it, we pull this out of the intestine. Ingesting plastic is not the only danger for marine life. Getting entangled in plastic has also become a major threat to many sea animals. The plastics in our oceans are affecting our marine life in a couple different ways. Um, what you may think of most commonly is uh, entanglement. So animals uh, get caught in debris, and this is usually macro debris, so we're thinking about nets, uh, bags, fishing line. They also can get stuck in it. Um, sometimes those plastic pieces have little circles involved and they get stuck and we call that entanglement. And again, it's not just the sea turtles, it can be a seagull, it can be anything as big as a whale. When a sea lion gets entangled in plastic, what happens is if they're young, their neck gets stuck in there and as the neck increases in girth and width, that nylon that doesn't stretch cuts in to the flesh. If the animal is older and it picks up a heavier net, then it's dead, it will probably drown it. Beachgoers leaving plastic packaging on our beaches is not the only source of this pollution. Plastic ends up in the ocean in a lot of different ways. The number one source of ocean pollution today is actually urban runoff. So that's that dirty water that's coming from our city streets, our urban slobber. Um, and so that will go you know, through our storm drains, those little gutters on our streets, those will meet up with pipes and channels, sometimes with creeks and rivers. And eventually all that water and all the pollution that went with it ends up in the ocean. You have a situation where people's trash from 50 miles inland makes its way to the coastline. We're talking millions and millions of people's trash flow down those flood control channels now, especially after a big rain. And that is really what is responsible for the uh, plastic degradation and uh, pollution which is entering the ocean. Nowadays, it is plastic, plastic, plastics. And it's all a lifestyle issue of how we're consuming and leading this throwaway lifestyle. That most of every, all these uh, plastic items that are discarded are uh, entering the ocean. Yeah, I've seen um, plastic uh, plastic bags, I've seen diapers, I've seen um, uh, those old uh, that used to carry the six packs together, I've seen those, so those really bad. Toys, everything, everything. Everything that uh, comes off from uh, uh, the runoff goes right into the ocean and um, it shows, especially after a storm, you can see it. That's why they recommend you don't go into the water about 72 hours after a storm because it's really dirty in there. 
15,000 miles from the California coast, a garbage patch twice the size of Texas is floating in the Pacific. The Pacific Garbage Patch is a, an accumulation zone in the North Pacific Ocean where plastic debris accumulates in higher concentrations due to the currents. The garbage patch is always changing in size depending on how the currents are moving. So there's really just so much of it that it's not economically uh, feasible to clean up the garbage patch. The ocean is so, so big that um, it would take tens, hundreds of years to be able to clean it all out. What makes more sense is if we stop plastic entering the ocean. Beach cleanups are one way of reducing pollution in our oceans. They also provide a fun way to meet others who have the same passion for saving the lives of marine animals. A beach cleanup is when a bunch of folks go down to the beach and do a community cleanup. So they go to pick up any sort of trash or plastic that may be on our shores. We have hundreds of people now that turn out uh, for our beach cleanups. We have them uh, bring it, we weigh it, we collect data, we sort it so that they can become familiar with the everyday items that are, are, we've identified as huge problems to the environment, especially the ocean. Walking along the beach and you see about 30, 40, 50 straws, um, other trash, and you just feel impelled to start picking it up and it's a lot more fun to kind of do it as a group. So when Surf Rider post, you know, they're doing a beach cleanup, I'm right there and um, I encourage a lot of my friends and fellow mermaid friends to come and support Surf Rider Foundation and other beach cleanups that go on. Another way of preventing plastic from entering our oceans is the banning of plastic products. In 2016, California banned single-use plastic bags. This eliminated more than 13 billion single-use plastic bags generated in California annually. The plastic bag ban in California is a huge step in the right direction. Um, it's allowing, or it is really showing that people are starting to be aware of the issue of plastic pollution. The single-use plastic grocery bag ban was a great victory for us. Um, unfortunately, that's not enough to go ahead and end our kind of single-use habits. It's more of a starting point. It's a gateway issue to get people, consumers, to rethink the way that they are you know, using single-use plastics in their everyday life. Message to the public is, don't buy plastic, don't let them use plastic bags in the supermarket, and also, do away with plastic water bottles. Try to get water that has non-plastic containers that are, are made of cardboard. The uh, ocean's environmental integrity is becoming degraded on an awesome scale compared to 50 years ago. And the main reason basically is population growth. 50 years ago, people were just as trashy as they are now but the trash itself was more environmentally friendly. The ocean is a place of peace and harmony. The choices we make about the products we buy and the methods we use to recycle and dispose of plastic waste will have a huge impact on the future of our beaches and oceans. Hopefully, we'll act responsibly so that future generations can enjoy the natural beauty of our oceans. <laughs>